Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. So today we have week two of weekly Q&A. And thank you to everyone who submitted questions this past week. We've got a lot of great questions to go over, a lot of ground to cover. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Question one comes to us from Lusombrus. I'd really like to see some more Book 3 Ultra tips. I'm having some trouble using three devices with multi-control. Both my S22 Ultra and Tab S8 Ultra are at One UI 5.1. All right, Lusombra, so yeah, so multi-control does support three devices. I've got three connected right now, and I wanna give a special shout out to Joe, a longtime supporter of this channel. Um, Joe mentioned that he had it working on his Book 2 Pro 360 S22 Ultra and his Tab S8 Ultra, and I was having a problem getting three devices to work at one time. I was only getting the S23 Ultra to work with the laptop. So thanks to you, Joe, I kinda of persevered through it got all three working. So hopefully we can talk through this, Lasombras, and get you up and running as well. So if you've never heard of multi-control before, it's a cool feature that's built into many Samsung laptops that allows you to use the trackpad and the keyboard over on your other Samsung Galaxy devices. So let me give you a quick sample of this in action. So you see the mouse cursor right in the middle of my screen here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the S23 Ultra and I'll go ahead and uh, open up the Play Store. You can see it open up on the phone over here. I'm gonna move my cursor back to the laptop. We're gonna go over here to the Tab S8 Ultra, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna open up the Play Store. And while you're over on either device, you can use your keyboard as well. So if you wanna to respond to text messages, type an email on from your tablet and send it from your tablet, you can do that while using the keyboard from your laptop. So what Lasombras is after is getting two devices to work with his laptop at the same time. So I was facing issues, like I mentioned, getting it working on my Tab S8 Ultra, and I found the solution to it. So here's a couple things that you gotta keep in mind when first setting up multi-control. The first thing is you gotta make sure all your devices have Bluetooth turned on. You wanna make sure all your devices that you're gonna connect up to are on the same Wi-Fi network, and you also wanna make sure that all three devices are signed into the same Samsung account. In addition to that, I highly recommend you take the time to go ahead and check for updates on all your devices that you're trying to use multi-control with. So I was really struggling to get the Tab S8 Ultra to connect. It would just say connecting, and then it would stop, and then it would say connecting, and then it would stop. Well, here's what I did on the tablet to get it working. Right, so on my tablet, I went ahead and swiped down. I went into settings. I went over to connected devices. And then we have call and text on other devices. So when I tapped on this, mine was connected to my Z Fold 4, which is a previous device I had before the S23 Ultra. And what I did is I went ahead and clicked these three dots, and then you can link to another device. So if this situation applies to you, you're gonna take your Galaxy phone, scan this QR code, and then it's gonna link your S22 Ultra up to your tablet. So we'll go ahead and get out of here. So mine switched over from uh, Brian's Z Fold 4 to Brian's S23 Ultra. And then what I did after that is I restarted my Tab S8 Ultra. I went back over to the tablet and it started working immediately. All three devices were able to pair up. I had no issues from that point forward. So Lasombras, it really comes down to just tweaking with it a little bit, making sure all your devices are on the same network. They're all updated. They're all uh, signed into the same Samsung account. You have Bluetooth turned on and you wanna make sure that you're not linked up to any old devices. That was the case for me. I was linked up to my old Fold, my old Fold 4, and once I broke that link and linked my tablet up to the S23 Ultra, the multi-control started working. I know that's totally weird. It's not mentioned anywhere like that in the documentation anywhere, but that's what worked for me. So hey, Lasombras, if this doesn't work for you, uh, shoot me a quick email. My email address is raidertechinfo at gmail.com. It's also on my About page here on YouTube. I'm happy to just set up a quick little Google Meet session with you. I'll take a look at your settings. We'll get you up and running, man. So yeah, multi-control definitely works on three devices. Great question. Thank you. All right, our next question comes to us from Nate. Can you attach the S Pen to the right side of the bottom panel? between the right side of the number keys and the outside right side of the laptop? Will it hold there nicely? That's a nice feature, that magnetic attachment capability, but attaching it along the bottom front would interfere with my typing. So it would either be in the outside upper top as you showed, or better still along the far right or far left side of the bottom 
lay flat section of the laptop in either case out of the way of interfering with my hands when in a typing position. All right, Nate, so that's a super long question, but I get the gist of what you're talking about. So we've got the S Pen here, and we've talked about in previous videos that we can attach the S Pen right here, right on top of the lid. And we also have a strong magnetic spot right here at the bottom of the trackpad. And what Nate is saying is, hey, I want to be able to use the S Pen without my wrist being in the way here. You see how the S Pen is in the way of his wrist? So Nate is asking, can we put it right here along this side by the numpad? And Nate, unfortunately, none of this is an option really, but I have an awesome spot for you. Here's a spot right here. Drop the pin right there. Right in between the lid and the chassis, the S Pen will magnetize against this hinge portion right here. I'm pretty sure it'll do on the left side too. Yep, it sure does. And let me show this to you real quick. So you can drop the pin there. It'll sit there magnetically. Let me tilt this up on its side so you can see. Pin is not going anywhere. All right, so Nate, this is a great spot to put your S Pin while you're working. Go up here and start doodling along. It'll magnetically attach right there between the lid and the keyboard itself. All right, so the next couple questions are about the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro and using them with a Windows machine. Unleash Gamer writes in, I have a doubt regarding the Buds 2 seamless connectivity. Is it really seamless like the Apple ones or do we have to do it manually? Because I tried and it wasn't that seamless. Please take this comment and answer it in the next video. Saihan also writes in, can you switch between your Windows PC and Android seamlessly in regards to the Buds 2 Pro? All right, well, thank you both for the great question. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and link a video down in the description because what I did is I went ahead and did a dedicated video for both of you on this. And in short, I can answer it here. Unfortunately, I'm finding that the Buds 2 Pro do not seamlessly switch between the Galaxy Book laptop or any Windows laptop and your other Galaxy devices. I did have one viewer comment in say that they're able to do it between their Book 3 Pro 360 and a couple other devices. But I have yet to get that to work. And the reason being is that these earbuds don't offer true multi-point connectivity. For example, I have some Jabra Elite 75 Ts that are multi-point capable and they will auto switch between my laptop. So to address both your questions, I'll link that video down in the description below. But in short, no, they don't really auto switch seamlessly. You kind of have to enable it when you head over to the laptop. It's unfortunate. Uh, it only takes a second to do and you do kind of get used to it but it sure would be nice if they were true multi-point. All right, our next question comes to us from Dylan, and this is in regards to the function row on the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360. The function F12 lock on reboot is still not fixed. I just got the Galaxy Book Pro 3 360, and the F12 lock turns off every time I restart or turn on the computer. So Dylan, thank you so much for your comment, question I should say. So what Dylan's referring to is function locking the function row. So we can press function F12 and you'll see function lock on. And if I press it again, function lock off up in the top left corner of the screen. Here, let me move this just a little bit so it's more in view. All right, so we'll do, go ahead and do that again. Now I have function lock on, which is gonna lock this functionality that these function keys have, like the brightness here. I'll go ahead and turn it up and turn it down. So what I'm noticing on mine, Dylan, is if I have an update pending, like if I go to my start menu, and it shows Windows updates. When I go to do a restart or shutdown or whatever it is, the function lock is no longer locked. And it's just like Galaxy Books of years past. However, I still notice that when I do a shutdown and bring it back up, the function row key is locked. It stays how I have it set, like I mentioned in that video. But I'm noticing since the most recent Samsung updates, when I do a restart, not a shutdown, but a restart, the function row lock is not staying. So as you can see here, we have uh, the function row lock locked, right? So we have this on, you see my brightness sliders here. Let's go ahead and do both real quick. Let's go ahead and initiate a shutdown. This will give you guys a good idea of how long it takes on this machine. We're gonna do a full shutdown right now. Let's let it do its thing. All right, it's done. Let's go ahead and restart it. All right, it's done. Let's go ahead and restart it. Give it just a moment to boot up. Pretty fast machines. They don't take long to boot up at all. This is a complete, you know, shutdown and restart here. So let's go ahead and hop in. As 
soon as it's done here. There we go. All right, let's see if it's locked or not. As you can see, the function row remain locked. So for me, Dylan, it's behaving as I mentioned, but now let's go ahead and do a restart to see if it sticks in that situation as well. All right, restart in progress. And we'll see if it's doing the same thing that I mentioned. So on a full shutdown, it is honoring my function lock setting. So if I have it on, it'll stay on. But just t but testing this just prior to this video, when I restart now, it's been taking it back off. And let's see if that's the case here. Give it just a moment to boot up. I'm not going to do any cuts here. I don't want you to think I'm doing any type of funny business or anything like that. Keep it on the uppity up here. Let's just let this start up here, however long it takes. Almost feels like the restart took longer than the actual shutdown and uh, fresh boot. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and press the function keys, and you will see that they no longer work. So yeah, that, that's what I'm noticing. It seems to be consistent now. So uh, Dylan, if I do a restart, my function row lock is no longer sticking. I'm having to do the function F12 thing again, like you're mentioning. And if I do a complete shutdown and bring the PC back up, the function row lock does stay in place. So uh, I don't know if they're going to fix this in a future update to make it persist in all situations, uh, but hopefully this does address your question. I, it's kind of changed on me since I got the laptop. It was working nonstop. It did happen since an update, which is a little unfortunate. All right, the next couple questions are about the overall strength of the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360. Ronald writes in, excellent video. I always watch your videos because they are the most informative and clear about Samsung devices. Well, thank you so much, Ronald. I really do appreciate that. I currently have the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 and love it in every way, but I'm always afraid of damaging its screen when handling it because of its fragility. Does the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 give you the confidence of being a strong to manipulate the screen without that fear? Um, and we have a similar question come in from HB001. Thank you for the video. Also, can you talk about screen cracking just after purchase in Samsung 360 devices in a new video? Much appreciated. Well, great questions. Thank you both so much. So here's the thing. With this year's model, the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 and the other models in this lineup, the biggest upgrade we're looking at is to the screen. We went from 1080p to 3K, right? 60 hertz to 120 hertz and the new 16 by 10 aspect ratio instead of 16 by nine. Outside of the screen, the number two improvement that we have this year is with the build quality. So with last year's Book 2 Pro 360 and years prior, these are all made out of magnesium. So this year's model though, however, has an aluminum chassis. And what that gives us is much stronger deck and a much stronger lid as well. Let me demonstrate this for you a little bit. So let me grab last year's model. All right, so I've got it right in view for you guys. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze in right on the top of this lid and the chassis itself. See if you can see that. Do you see that flexing? You have a ton of flex between the hinges and that's why I always tell people don't grab this laptop from here. Grab it by the hinges or down by the trackpad. So now if I grab this year's model, and we wanna go where the hinges are again, once again, by going here and push in that middle, I am not getting any flex on this. I mean, maybe about a millimeter. Uh, that's about it. Here's another thing I want you to look at as well. So I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but the actual thickness of the lid is literally almost twice as thick on this year's model compared to last year's model. So the lid itself, you can't really manipulate much on this year's model. Whereas on last year's model, if I come over here, uh, I'm not sure if you see that, but I'm flexing it quite a bit. Let me get these corners going, see if you guys can see that. Do you see that flex I have going on there? Quite a bit of flex on the lid, and I don't want to do it any more than that because I don't want a chance cracking it. If we go over here to this year's model and we do the same stress test, yeah, it's hardly flexing at all. Definitely much more rigid, much more firm on this year's model. That goes around for the whole chassis as well. Uh, the aluminum build is just much stronger than the magnesium, but I will say this too. If you're happy with your Book 2 Pro 360, I say just keep it. I mean, this is a nice machine, but it's not worth the asking price. $18.99 right now, I'd wait for it to go down in price personally. All right, so the next two questions are about Samsung Notes. 
Eclectic writes in, I have a similar problem that I would greatly appreciate you doing a video on. Samsung Notes. It syncs fine between my Samsung Galaxy S8 Ultra and 23 Ultra, but not my Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360. I'm logged into my Samsung account on all three devices and have sync turned on, but they just won't sync. I'm also on the same Wi-Fi network. Matt also writes in, have you encountered the sync problem with the PC app and how to fix it? I can sync between tablet and phone all day, but when forced syncing on the Galaxy Book, it will not pull in the notes. All right, those are both great questions, and it sounds like you're both facing an issue getting your latest notes to sync up with your Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360. So the first thing you wanna make sure you do on any of these new Galaxy Books is to go ahead and open up Samsung Update like we talked about at the beginning of the video. Check for Windows updates and check for Samsung updates because you don't wanna be ruling those things out. So go ahead and get your machine completely updated and then you wanna go ahead and load up Samsung Notes. I'm gonna go ahead and get it in better view here on the screen so we can all see along here. And then normally just to sync up, you can just swipe down and it's gonna do a refresh of your notes, right? So if that doesn't work for you, if you're not seeing anything here, you wanna to go to settings, you're gonna sync with Samsung Cloud. So what you probably wanna go ahead and do is just sign out and sign back in with your Samsung account, then go ahead and sync now to force a manual resync. I had to do this the first time that I loaded up Samsung Notes on this machine. It would not load up these notes at all. Um, and the one service that Samsung Notes and a lot of these other services and applications rely on is called the Samsung Continuity Service. So that's the one service you really wanna pay attention to when you're performing the Samsung updates. And if that has an update pending, you definitely wanna get that installed right away. All right, so that's gonna wrap up this week's weekly Q&A. We're now done with week two. So hey everyone, if you have any questions that you would like featured in an upcoming Q&A video, please drop them down below or in any of the upcoming videos that'll be out on the channel. I really do appreciate everyone's time. And as always, thanks for watching.